Good morning, class. Today I'm going to be teaching you about problem solving. You may think our brains solve problems automatically, but actually there are many different ways we can do such things. The first step to problem solving is defining the problem. There are two main ways our brain does this. There is divergent thinking and convergent thinking. Divergent thinking is thinking that involves generating many possible answers, but convergent thinking is thinking that narrows down to one final destination or answer. There are three main types of solving problems. There is a way called trial and error, there are algorithms, and there are heuristics. Trial and error is mostly used when you have limited possible answers. Multiple choice is a great way to use trial and error. When you don't know which one might be the right answer, just try them out. Oh no, I'm locked out. I have five keys. Which one's gonna work? I'll use trial and error. Not this one. Not this one. Not this one. <gasps> it was this one! Trial and error really works. In most cases, trial and error can waste a lot of time though. Algorithms require a right solution. However, sometimes they can be timely and take a lot of complex reasoning to carry out. For example, a mathematic formula is an algorithm. Yes? I can't figure out how to do 50 divided by 5. Well, if you use an algorithm for the rules of division, you can figure out it easily. It always guarantees the right answer. I got it! It's 10! Algorithms really work. Yes, they do. When an algorithm is unavailable, we often turn to heuristics. Heuristics don't guarantee the right answer, but they bring us in close reach to it. One heuristic is called hill climbing. This type of problem solving method is used to continually get closer to the final solution with never going backwards. Sometimes we have to ask ourselves, how close are we to the final answer? Hill climbing is often useful on multiple choice questions when we can eliminate unreasonable answers. Who is the president of the United States? George Washington? No, he was the first president. Bernie Spears? No, she's a singer. Barack Obama? Maybe. Ben Franklin? He was no president. The answer must be C, Barack Obama. You just used heuristics. You used the heuristic hill climbing, which talks about eliminating impossible answers. Good job. Heuristics really work. Another type of heuristic is called subgoals. Often, we break problems down into smaller pieces instead of looking at the whole problem altogether. Means end analysis combines hill climbing and subgoals. It is a type of heuristic that compares the current situation and the desired end. After the difference is apparent, something must be done to reduce that difference. I lost my phone and I want to move forward to find it, but I have to go backwards. Well, I came over here to read this magazine. Then I took a nap. So, oh my gosh, it's right here. Means end analysis really works. Means end analysis takes into account the whole problem. Sometimes in means end an analysis, we must take a step backward to get closer to the final answer. Working backwards is used when the goal has more information than the givens. Operations usually can work in two directions. I have 10 apples. I want 25 apples. How many more apples do I need? Hmm. I'll start with my total 25 and subtract that by 10. Oh, 15 apples. Paige worked backwards by starting at her final goal. Working backwards really works. Of course, a person's personal motivation can very much help their problem solving techniques, but there are many ways that can hinder this as well. A factor that can greatly help or hinder problem solving is mental set. Mental set is a tendency to perceive or approach problems in certain ways. A mental set can be very helpful if we have learned operations that are applicable to our present situation. However, if we have not, then we might, we might approach problems in the wrong way. A mental set that can definitely prevent accurate solutions is functional fixedness. 
The more you use an object in a certain way, the harder it is to see new uses and new ways to use that same object. I'm bored and all I have is this pen and paper. What can I do other than drawing? Well, Paige is stuck with a functional fixedness because she can't think of any other uses for pen and paper than what she's already previously known. Paige, you need to change your mental set. Oh, I can make a flag. Or I can make a hat. Or I can even make a telescope. <laughs> Looking for new ways to solve problems is called brainstorming. When brainstorming, you must generate a lot of ideas to review and evaluate. Hopefully, this will get you closer to the final solution. Hmm, what should I do today? I'm going to make a brainstorming list. I could paint my nails. I could eat a hoagie. I could play video games. Or I could work on my project. I think I'm going to work on my project since it's most beneficial. Brainstorming can often create new ideas to find the most applicable solution. Visualizing is a great way to see your information. You can draw images, graphs, charts, or tables to lay out your information in orderly ways. I need to make a card for physics. I don't know what it should look like. Let me visualize it. Hmm. I could use the rubber bands here. CDs here. Perfect. Visualizing really works. 